Spanning the divide in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the Walnut Street Bridge is postcard perfect. A place to stroll in the sunshine and enjoy the warm southern breeze. It is also a place of a savage, near unspeakable atrocity. Sometimes you can sort of feel the eerie ghost of the past when you know the story. Eric Atkins took us to the place where 115 years ago on this spot, a black man named Ed Johnson, who'd been wrongly convicted of rape in a sham trial, was pulled from a prison cell, marched down to that bridge, and then lynched. And this is where we believe they would have brought Ed Johnson when he was taken out of the county jail. Somewhere here. Somewhere in here. And they shot at him. Oh, oh yeah, they shot at him mercilessly. Even when he was on the ground, he was shot several dozen times. They wanted to make sure that uh, the job they set out to do was finished. The Chattanooga Times headlined his last words. God bless you all, he said. I'm innocent. Shot even as he was hanged, a bullet broke the rope. He fell to the ground still breathing. As the Times put it, he was then shot to death by a mob like a dog. There was outrage at the time, and though it took decades, Johnson's conviction was later overturned. But as with so many of America's more than 4,000 documented lynchings, for many, his murder kind of faded from memory. Now, his story is being retold. This is where, this is where the statues will be? This is where they will be, three of them. This summer, in the very shadow of the bridge where he was killed, this almost finished memorial to Johnson and his two black lawyers will be open for all to come learn the story and consider America's lingering racial divide. Atkins is one of the volunteers behind the project. Hopefully with this memorial, people can have a changed heart. We can have a changed heart to treat people the way that you want to be treated. We can have an open heart to where we all are free and we all have rights and we all can advance the way that the country is supposed to advance. Indeed, lost on no one is that stories like Johnson's, black Americans killed unjustly, continue in this country, as does rage, with reason to still use that word in desperate pleading protest. Working with Atkins at that bridge is Donovan Brown. We could have simply forgotten Ed Johnson and went on our, our way, but in a society where we do honor, where we do memorial. He underlines more than a century after Johnson's death, his story is instructive and vital. Ed Johnson is still communicating to us, and we are doing our best to listen to him in the time where there's a reckoning happening both within the city of Chattanooga, within our county, and certainly within the country. He lives. <laughs> he does. And here's something else about that bridge. To this day in Chattanooga, there remain black Americans who stay away from it, who never forgot. And they still see other reminders, lessons are needed. It started from this era. Greg Beck, who indeed will not step foot on that bridge, brought us here to one of those Confederate statues you hear about, still in place in the U.S. South. This one's in Chattanooga, not far from where Johnson was hanged and shot. Is it trying to say the South will return? Or what is it trying to say? It continues to say to us, you are marginal. Beck sees the Johnson Memorial as a step forward, but only a step. Alongside that bridge, it urges the value of learning from America's past. I want people to understand when they walk by there that there is a power somewhere that that's trying to do some things as, a, as a, far as justice is concerned. This is something that that poor man went through that nobody else should have to go through. As the memorial nears completion, a once neglected cemetery on the other side of Chattanooga is also in the midst of renewal. Look carefully and you'll find a name that now resonates again in this city. Ed Johnson, not forgotten. One voice in America's continuing reckoning on race, undenied.
Paul Hunter, CBC News, Chattanooga, Tennessee.